All right, so I went to go move the Alice in the shop this morning, or this afternoon, and the starter's doing the same problem that it had when I first got it. And I'm sorry about the light. My goal was to get this thing in the shop before I started doing some work on it. Uh, but I need, to, I need to take the starter back off. That way I can adjust it, um, or at least fix the spinning part. But I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the symptoms for you. So that whirring basically just indicates that the starter is the, the bendix on the starter is stuck. So to take the starter off, um, you know, normally you would think, okay, a starter is going to be held in by multiple bolts. Well, you get to looking around, and really, the only place you have to choose, and I want to make sure that you can see this on the camera, is you either, sorry, you either have these bolts back here, which most likely those little tiny heads would not hold the entire starter on, or you have this bolt, because there are no bolts over on the other side. So you have to, I made the assumption yesterday when I first started this, that it's this bolt right here, which it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Try to crack the sediment bowl in the process. that and how it's held in <clears throat> is just a you see the kind of the point there basically that centers up the starter and make sure it's at the right depth so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the nut the bolt there and set it to the side and I should oh nope I gotta go over to the other side and I'll show you what I could do have to do over there so over on this side what we have is this rod right here is what actually uh, there's a button on the starter and that's the uh, that's what engages the starter uh, this rod right here actually goes up to the seat which I'll show you the controls later so what I have to do is there's this little um, little itty bitty clip in there I'm just gonna take and put that to the side for right now just put it down there and then pull this up and off that way I can take the starter out. Now we can go back over to the other side and take the starter off. So now back over on the other side, we can just kind of lightly pull the starter back. And it's going to hang up some. It's going to get caught on a couple things, so on and so forth. But then it's going to come out. So then we can just take, move it over here. Because it's an old starter, it's heavy. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you, but basically what happens is this Bendix right here is caught. So this is the, make sure you can see this. Yep. So this is the starter drive right here, and this Bendix is caught. And it's basically what's happening is it's not coming out. And so if you... These are just former repairs right here. There we go. I was going the wrong way. So now when the starter spins, this gear spins out and engages with the flywheel on the tractor. And what happens is, is every now and then this comes back and it sticks and it won't be able to go forward. And so you just got to make sure that there's like, let me see if I can actually make it do it. And so see it's stuck again and so it's easy enough to come unstuck there's just not enough spin force on the starter itself to make that happen so i'm going to put this now that i've got this freed up and i mean it's a simple enough fix for what i'm trying to do i can put the starter back in there like i said these starters aren't necessarily light get the hole lined up which it is and then I can tighten it back in there and we can see if it will start. It didn't seem like it really wanted to start as well today as it did yesterday. And I would really like to get it in the back of the shop before getting me out of the sun. Bef 
before uh, I replace the fuel line, well, fuel fittings. So there's that. So now, let's see if it will start and um, we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna move you over to the other side. So this will just be a trial and run for me to get it in the back of the shop. So I'm actually going to go work on that. Uh, I'm just going to basically repeat what I've already done uh, several times. I'm pretty sure that what I need to do is I just need to go ahead and drop the bowl of the carb. I'm um, guessing it probably has some trash in it, but I really, really wanted to get this in the back of the shop. So I'm going to go work on the starter for a few minutes and see if I can get it running. Then I get it back to the shop and I'll come back and I'll. Uh, show everything else that I need to do. Alright, so what I thought was going to be a simple fix, uh, my non-start problem that I'm having today is actually a symptom of something that's a little bit more complicated. If you'll notice, so the gas is not only leaking from here, it is now leaking out of the intake of the carburetor. That tells me a couple different things. One, either the float has a hole in it, and it ran so well yesterday because it had been the bowl of the carburetor had been empty or the float is set in properly which my guess is the float has a hole in it so probably what I need to do is I actually need to rebuild the carburetor or at least take the bowl off um, to do that I really would prefer to get it in the shop that way is out of the elements uh, so I think I'm just going to have to go ahead I'm gonna shut the gas off now that I've shown it leaking um, I think what I need to do is I just need to go ahead and push, pull, drag it into the back of the shop. And from there, I will um, figure out the carburetor. I know you can get carburetor kits online. I found a couple of them. So I just really need to take it off. And uh, I got to figure out how to do that. Because you've got linkages coming from both sides. So this is this on this side. Let me make sure you can see my hand. This side is the choke and this side is the throttle. And I don't see, maybe you can just take the pins off on the other end. So um, I'm going to work on getting this in the back of the shop and we'll see uh, how it goes. And then we can take the carburetor off. Actually, I decided I'm going to go ahead and attempt to take the carburetor bowl off out here. First thing I'm going to do, this is a jet of some type, I'm guessing. I'm going to remove that. That should drain the bowl of the carburetor. That is my guess. I've never worked on one of these. Oh yeah. Okay. So there's that part. So that'll work on draining the bowl, that way I'm not having a... And honestly, the gas, the fuel doesn't sound, smell too good either. So now, let's take the 
the bowl off. Probably ripping all the gaskets in the process, which I have none. So, you know, then we'll have to order some, which will require a three day wait or a four day wait. Oh, hey, this is the drain. Ew. That should not be in the bottom of a carburetor. I can tell you that. I don't know. Hopefully, you can see that. So, this is the drain down here, I guess. Um, let me go get uh, something to poke up in there, see if we can drain it better. The really sad part about this is I actually did run this last night. Well, I guess that's, that's nice and empty in there. That's good. Alright, so that's not how you get the bowl off. I think you actually get the bowl off by those, there's four screws right there. So I'm guessing you gotta take the carburetor off to get the bowl off. Go figure. I'm gonna put these, car, these parts back on here so I don't lose them. And I'm going to go actually look at a parts diagram and you see exactly how this carburetor is put together. I hope I can find one. So I'm gonna go do that. And I don't need to see the video of me looking up parts because I just stare there with stare there with my stare at it with my mouth open for a while. So I'll go do that and then we'll come back and we'll discuss some more. Alright, I got the WD in the shop here, or WD45. Um, need to take the carburetor off and I think to do that um, so we've got the choke cable back here against the engine block and the throttle cable right here the throttle cable <clears throat> I mean I'm feeling back there it seems to be pinned in with a um, clip and so I think I'm actually going to remove it over here so there is a um, connection right here I'm just going to go ahead and remove it at that connection seems nice thing is, is these pins are um, easy enough and we can just pull it off there so that is off of there so now um, my air cleaner has already been taken off I do need to remove the fuel line do that fuel line is now off so now it's just down to the choke which I really I don't have an option to remove the choke like I did the um, throttle so I'm just gonna go ahead and work on taking these nuts off and I thought they were 9 16 oh no it was a half inch <clears throat> so nope not 9 16 are they 5 8 they're 5 8 so I'm going to take these off. And I looked it up. You can get a carb kit with a float for $80 off of eBay. So not the end of the world. Just I've never rebuilt one of these carburetors before. So now, take the washers off, put that down there. Sorry about my hands there. All right. So what do I see to get this off of here? So this one is like a, yeah, there's a clip right there. So this, I can actually come out and this, does, <laughs> this one doesn't even have a clip on it. So there is the carburetor. Now I need to figure out how to take the bowl out. And for that, I'm actually going to go into the front part of the shop. That way I can put it out on a tray and everything 
and I'm not worried about losing parts. So let me uh, take this to the front part of the shop and I'll set the camera up and we'll take it apart. All right, so let's take a gander at this. It is dry in the bottom, but it is extremely rusty. You can see that. I'm guessing there's a lot of water that sat in that over the last couple years or whenever the last time it was used. And it looks like this cavity right here doesn't go all the way through. It stops about right there, which makes sense why I didn't get anything out of this. So this is just an open cavity and the float would be over here. That's my guess. The throttle moves nice and well. So let's, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this out. It's, this is already bent, I'm guessing from people putting it, from somebody um, putting it down hard on something. Part of the kit is you get a new one of those. So. I'm just gonna drain the rest of the gas on the floor. <clears throat> and then see if I can't get these bolts or these nuts or screws loose. I'll find the right term here in a little bit. One of my complaints with carburetor kits is they're always so expensive and I mean $80 realistically to rebuild a carburetor is not too bad but you always seem to get crap that you don't need. Like, for instance, why on earth do, do carb all carburetor kits include four new screws when you don't need four new screws oftentimes? And so, I mean, it's like Onan parts stuff. I have got buckets and buckets and buckets of Onan parts off of carburetors because I didn't need a whole kit. All right, have all four of the... That was easy. So that came apart relatively easy. Huh. I don't hear anything. I would guess that there's quite a bit of water in there. Um. We're gonna set this aside. We'll turn this over. See if we can get this pin out right here. There we go. So that takes the float out. Let's see if you can see this. So we're taking the float out. So here's the needle valve. I'm gonna set that to the side. Now, theoretically, if we have a float problem, there's gonna be fuel in this. which there's, I don't hear anything. So that is good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take the gasket off to just protect it. I'm guessing this is a control of the airflow somehow. Um, since there was no, I was really expecting our float to be full. Um, and our needle doesn't look terrible. Maybe our needle was just sticking. Uh, there is quite a bit of crud in the bottom. And it really does, it really smells bad. It smells like there's water. My, I'm wondering if I didn't get some water in the fuel. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, and I'm gonna do this off camera just because it's, I don't think I need to do it on camera. I'm going to go clean this entire carburetor. Um, that, that'll take me probably an hour or more. I'm going to clean it really, really well. And I'm not going to disassemble it all the way. I'm just going to clean it. And we might put it back on there and see if we can get this thing to run again. Um, that way I know what I might need. So I am going to go do that. 
All right, I got the carburetor back together and it's okay for right now. Um, still not too terribly excited about it. I still think we're headed for a carb rebuild kit. The next thing I need to do is replace this fitting right here. Um, this is a flare nut fitting. Uh, I don't know why it's on here. I dug through basically and then they have a, a soft a fuel regular just fuel hose running into this. Well, that's not very um, leak proof. So that's where a lot of the uh, gas is coming from. So to take this off. I dug through all of my supplies that I had on hand and I couldn't find anything that worked for what I was doing, uh, what I was looking for. Then, so this morning, Saturday morning, I went to uh, a bunch, the farm store, Lowe's, all kinds of places looking for a uh, one eighth to three or one quarter, no, one eighth to one eighth to three, one eighth um, MIP to a three eighths barb at 90 degree elbow. Well, couldn't find that and they were out of everything else that I was looking for. So we're gonna kind of make this up. Um, you know, so I had to spend 15 bucks on fittings, but I think what we're gonna do is we've got this up close adapter right there. Basically screw it into the carb. <clears throat> And then we'll put this, I think we're going to put this extension on there. Or we might just put this adapter in there and then we're going to adapt it to a 3 8 um, barb off the adapter right there. That's the plan for right now. Pick this up, work with it. All right, call that good. Probably not, but we're gonna call it good. Next, take and peel off the paper. We're going to put this on. I'm gonna hate the looks of this, but this is about the only thing that I could come up with in short order. So, this is what we're going to use for today. And then, last piece, take and drop this in here. Tighten it down. Now we've created a uh, setup where there's only going to be, you know, 18 places for it to leak, and I'm sure half of them are going to leak the first time we turn the gas onto it. So, all right, now what I'm going to do? See how much battery the camera has left? Mm, can't see it from that screen. We're going to put this back on the tractor and um, see if we can't get it to run a little bit better. Uh, I do. I still have this out because this uh, I don't I don't want to bend it anymore, and so I'm gonna put that in after I get this back on the tractor. So I'm gonna get set up and we'll do that. All right, we're reusing gaskets, doing all kinds of stuff we shouldn't be doing, but you know if this gets it running, gives me a good idea of what else I need. That's all that really matters. So. Um, I think actually before I do that, I need to put our choke back on there. And then I need to put, if I can get that to stay right there. Put my throttle cable. I'm apologies about my hand. So basically you just put the throttle cable back on there or the throttle check, uh, link, whatever. 
dropping nuts and bolts everywhere. And then we can put this back on there. And then put that back there. Put our washers on. Put our nuts on. And now we can tighten it down. With no idea what kind of val torque value we need or anything else because I don't have any manuals. I mean, honestly, having a manual would make this process a whole lot easier. But why would we do something like that? Doesn't look nearly as bad as it did. I suppose that's good. Okay. Now let's put our gas line on. Tighten our hose clamp down. I almost said turn the fuel on, well that would have been a disaster because I don't have that. Don't have our, um, whatever these are called. Uh, jet in there. So I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna make this all the way closed. Like so. Okay, well, let's turn the fuel on and see if we, good grief. How on earth is this leaking? Problem is, is I couldn't find another 3 8 fuel line either. So this is all we get. So I guess this looks like it's split a little bit. So I need to go find something to cut that and um, then we'll see if we can actually make it work. All right, we'll turn the fuel on. See if we have any leaks. Now we wait. <clears throat> Oops, as I hit the camera, sorry. None there. None coming out of our air cleaner. That was pretty fast originally. And I'm going to have to get some hose clamps for this air cleaner. I really do not like how open that system is. All right, well, I suppose the next step would be to see if it actually fires again. So I need to clean up all of my tools and whatnot and go from there. All right, let's see if we can get it to fire up again. I'm going to do it from the other side. <clears throat> sneaking suspicion that it's going to have problems, but, you know, you never know.
now I'm gonna, so I've got the gas all the way shut. I'm just gonna adjust it out a little bit at a time. All right, well, I think I'm gonna call it quits until I get a book and and or carburetor kit.